This episode is brought to you by Battleborn Batteries, the best name in the RV and marine industry. These lithium batteries are designed and assembled in the USA, backed by a 10-year warranty. The best solution for your battery anxiety. So go check them out at BattlebornBatteries.com. Whether your adventure is on the road, on the water, or off the grid, Battleborn Batteries keep you out there longer. You are listening to Beyond the Wheel, a podcast about the people and ideas that drive the RV community forward. Hey, Sean, how are you doing tonight? Good, Kenny. How are you? It was a rough day of driving today, but uh, but we made it home. Yeah, we both did a little bit of driving today. And for anybody that's catching us live right now, we are burning the midnight <laughs> oil. <laughs> And uh, Sabrina actually laughed at me when I said that because it's only 8.30 p.m. But this is like tippy-toeing right on my bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> not for you, though. You no, you actually are me. a late owl. Yeah, I'm just getting started. So yeah. this will be, uh, yeah, it's like normal time for me to do this. This That's true. This is kind of your your time of like when you get started on you even start projects this late at night sometimes yeah usually eight yeah because I, I i know it's not uncommon for you to be up at like 2 a.m or something like that and i'm already yeah. asleep for like five hours yeah yeah no i i get my second wind about 10 so <laughs> but i didn't have any coffee today so i'm not sure how that's gonna really affect me. None, none at all none at all nope i got it i slept in a little bit and then uh we went out because we were down in Lynchburg, Virginia. So we went out and did some more exploring before we headed back home this evening. Okay. Oh. I don't know. Uh, you must have had some type of caffeine though. Nothing. Really? See, I get a headache if I if I don't drink something with caffeine in it. And if I don't drink something with caffeine in it, then I at least have, uh, Sabrina found these like little caffeine gummies that keep us going. <laughs> I might have a cup of coffee just because I like it before, after we're done here, I might, I might. Then I would coffee. never fall asleep. That's probably the only time I stay up late is if I have a cup of coffee late in the afternoon or late at night, the caffeine will keep me awake, but that doesn't bother you. You could drink that and then go yeah. to sleep. I mean, I, I used to drink a Mountain Dew before going to bed, but it's been since November 24th. I haven't had any, no carbonated beverages. We both gave up something. You gave up Mountain Dew and I gave up coffee. coffee. I switched to tea. Yeah. And you, you've you been off of your Mountain Dew, though, for longer than I've been off coffee. I've been off coffee for maybe six, seven weeks. And you've, you're, when did you say? November 24th of last oh, year. Wow. Yeah. Probably like six months then. Almost six months. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Hey, good for you, Sean. Yeah. Well, the Mountain Dew, I would think, not so much the caffeine, but that sugar. <laughs> lot because you weren't drinking diets i don't think no 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 <laughs> a lot of sugar yeah a lot of sugar in them and if you haven't uh guessed just yet today's episode is really a get to know us episode sean and i realized that we interview a lot of people and we talk to them and we find out about their backstories about them and the company history their history but for anybody that has listened to us we never really talk too much about ourselves where we came from how we got started with the podcast or uh, what what are the things that we enjoy about our veine and we sent out an email and asked for you the listener to give us some questions and uh terry came through in a big way terry's got a bunch of questions for us and we sprinkled in a couple of our own questions in here as well yeah nice also, shout out to terry that was that's awesome yeah a lot of good questions too a lot of great questions and yeah, Terry, you like saved us a ton of work because we didn't have to come up with them. <laughs> and um, also in that email, uh, we said, you know, if, if we, we do have stickers. I don't have one hold up right now, but it looks exactly like what's over Sean's shoulder right now on the right side there. We have stickers that are cut to that shape and everything, and we're giving them away free. We usually were, we were planning on passing them out at shows when we met people, but because of COVID, that's still not really going on. So we're sitting on a stack of stickers and I thought, hey, Sean, why not just open it up to anybody that's listening 
wants a sticker, we can give it to them. And then we also put it in an email. So for anybody that wrote to us, your stickers are in the mail. And I would imagine that you're going to get them uh, early this week. I sent them out on third Wednesday or Thursday of last week. Yeah. And then uh, send us a picture of where you put it so we can throw it on Instagram and put it in our newsletter for everyone to see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I I think it's kind of fun. So we got two photos so far, Sean. One, somebody put on their drinking cup and it kind of matches their, their drinking cup. And we got another one today of somebody that put it on their luggage. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be sharing them on Instagram. I, I'm curious to see what people do with their stickers and where they wind up. I got mine on the back of my car. I don't know. Do you have, where did you put a sticker? Yeah. No, I have one on the back of my truck and the rear window. My daughter-in-law has one on, on her car. Okay, nice. Yeah. And then I'm going to do a shameless plug here. If Sean is ready, I don't know if he is because I forgot to remind him. Okay. Do you have our Beyond the Wheel coffee mug right there? I don't, but okay. I can, I'll, I'll ask Julie to get it when she <laughs> don't comes worry back about up. It. But it's really nice. It is. I'm really impressed with the way it came out. We're using a company called Spreadshirt. And we're going to be selling some mugs on Spreadshirt. So we did a little tester. I don't have my, I'm not prepared either because we did a, a hat and we did a mug and the hat we're not crazy about. It's not nice enough. I don't think that anybody should buy it. That's just my honest opinion. So I took it off the store, but the mug I'm very impressed with. And I think you bought one. I'm going to buy one once we're settled into a, a location long enough that I can receive some now because I really like that mug. I think it's a ceramic mug yeah. and it's got the logo and you got like three colors to choose from. It really came out nice. I think it's priced right. I think it's under 14 bucks or something like that. We don't get all that $14. I think we make a dollar or two off of it, but that money goes into the podcast. It goes into microphones and I, I broke my headset. So I had to buy another headset. You know, it just goes into like little things like that for the, yeah. for the podcast. <laughs> it's a little pocket change for us. So I guess we can get this episode started and I'm going to, I was going to ask you the first question, but maybe you want to ask me the first question. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll ask you. Okay. So Kenny, tell us about yourself and your role at Beyond the Wheel. All right. I have been RVing for a little over four years. I have been full-timing for exactly four years. Got our start in RVing from a, a rental just to kind of try it out. Sabrina and I were looking for something, a big change in life, I guess you could say. We wanted to spend more time together. Sabrina was working a ton of hours at a hospital. I was running my own business, working out a lot of hours, not as much as she was. But it was hard for us to find time together. She wasn't all that crazy about her work. She wasn't all that happy with it. You know, we started watching YouTube videos of people living in an RV and working from their RV. And there's such a thing called locum for doctors. Sabrina is a pulmonary critical care physician where you can travel from hospital to hospital as a physician, filling in at hospitals that need help, whether that be to fill in time for a doctor that's on vacation or maybe somebody left the job or just too busy. Like with COVID, that's been her whole year is we we just need more help, more help, more help. So uh, she quit her job. I sold my business. We moved into the RV and we've been traveling in the RV ever since. A couple of the things that have happened within those four years, I went to the NRVIA school and got certified as an RV inspector. Not so much as a, for business, but for ourselves, because constantly moving, we wanted to have a good understanding of how everything functioned in the RV. That class definitely did it. It was a two-week course filled with information. Actually, they'd be great to have on the show. I think we've mentioned this before. We should try to get them on the show. But yeah, awesome class. Took the course, passed, certified RV inspector. Started writing for Winnebago. Sabrina and I were at the Winnebago rally in July, the first year that we were RVing. We owned a Winnebago. Got in touch with their marketing team just kind of by chance, just from being at the show. They liked our personalities. There's a little bit more to it than that. Uh, we actually ran into Steph and James, the Fit RV, and we were talking with Steph. And Steph's like, oh, you guys are so funny. I like you guys. Oh, what do you guys do? They found out that Sabrina was a doctor. She's like, oh, that's so different. She was like, I should introduce you to our marketing team. We're looking for people for what we call the uh, Winnebago Go Life team. It's just a team of people that write stories for Winnebago that own an RV. I met with the marketing team there 
at the rally, we hit it off. They liked Sabrina and I. We became Go Life members almost immediately. And then throughout a little bit of time, we're now Winnebago ambassadors. Uh, I will say that my relationship with Winnebago is awesome. We love the people there. We feel like we are part of the family. Hopefully they feel like we are part of their family. They're awesome. We've talked to people from manufacturing to production, to service, to marketing, and every single person that we talk to at Winnebago is always top notch. And they have treated us so well for the last four years. Also in that time period, Getting on to the Beyond the Wheel, Sean and I met at the RVE Summit in 2018. 18, yeah. 2018. We we kind of hit it off there at that event. And if for anybody that's wondering what is an RVE Summit, it's where RVers are able to get together, kind of brainstorm and learn how to work from the road. I remember we, we sat down at a picnic table. It was night or maybe it wasn't a picnic table, but a cafe area or something there. And we, we wound up talking most of that night. And then we all went our separate ways after that week. And you had given me a call and said, Hey, I'm thinking about putting together a podcast based on the RV industry. I want to focus on the industry part of RV and not so much the lifestyle. And I was like, man, I, I love that idea. And I didn't know that you were asking if, if I wanted to be part of it. I thought you were just asking my opinion of it. I said, I think that's a great idea. And he's like, well, I also want you to co-host it. And if you, and I said, I said, yes, right away. I said, Oh yeah count me in because I love the idea. I, I think it's fantastic. I think this will really take off. But then I said to you, I'm, I'm just curious though, if I would say no, who, who's your backup? And you said, oh, I don't have a backup. If you don't say yes, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so then I, I guess my role for that second part of that question is, geez, I, I don't know. I write the show notes. I uh, do the monthly newsletter. And that's really about it. I, I try to... You get a lot of the guests. Too. I try to get a lot of the guests because you're really busy with everything else that has to do with the podcast. I mean, Sean is the, you know, the driving force behind the podcast. So I, I try to get the guests, at least. I feel like that's my contribution is trying to get the people on because I feel like you're already like really bogged down with all the other responsibilities of running the podcast. I do the Instagram, but you do every other social media that we have for it. And uh I'll, I'm going to turn it over to you now so that people can know all the things that you do. But Sean, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Beyond the Wheel podcast? Sure. Yeah, I um, spent 20 years in the military and Julie, my wife, did the same. She retired a little before me because I got out to go to college and she went to college while she was in the military. And so when when it was my t time to retire from the military, we had family spread out all over the country and we had nowhere that we would call home because Julie grew up between California, Oklahoma, and Georgia. And my father was in the military as well. So I grew up uh, Spain, England, Alaska. We didn't have anywhere that we really called home or that we had family settled at. So we decided to just get an RV and travel and see the country and see what we could find. And we've been doing that since we moved into an RV in 2014. And in 2020, we bought a house in Virginia close to our oldest son because his wife was getting ready to have a baby. So Julie said we need to settle down and stay put for a while while, the, while we have the baby. So we just settled down last year, but we're still traveling at least a few days a month in the RV and uh, trying to get through, really get in depth in Virginia, see what everything there is to see in Virginia right now. And then we'll move on to the other states after that. While we were RVing, we got involved in this. Pro well, first we just started a, a website and a YouTube channel because everything we were learning so much RVing, learning things the hard way, I like to say. And so we like to share those things with other people. So we were really, I guess, our website and our YouTube channel were really more educational than kind of the vlog style. So we, we like to talk about lessons we learned and how to avoid them and things like that. So we started that. And from there, we got involved in this RV Nomads project, which uh, really connected us with a lot of other RVers that were going to be in this documentary 
And so we realized that there was so much more going on in RVing than we were aware of. And that's when we started going to things like the RVE Summit. So like Kenny already told the story, we met there and and I, I always had this idea for a podcast focus on industry because it's cool to learn about all the different products and the behind the scenes stuff that goes into making all these products and all of the unique people that are coming up with these ideas. And so I always thought it would be a cool selfishly to talk with them and see what, what was going on. Um, so that's my, the idea behind the podcast. And then uh, we, what, it's been three years now, two and a half years, two and a half years we've been doing it. It's been just like I suspected, educational. Every time we, do, every time we talk to somebody, we learn something new. And my role here is I do the editing and the website and our email list and some of the social media. So we make a, a good team because I'm sure Kenny likes to do the stuff that I don't like to do. And <laughs> I do the stuff that Kenny probably doesn't like to do. So it, it's worked out very rarely have we disagreed on anything. So I think we're, it's worked out really well. It has worked out really well. And I totally agree with what you said about you do what I wouldn't want to do. I wouldn't want to sit and listen to the episode. Like when you're editing, you're kind of listening to it over and over again and like cutting out the ahs, the ums, yeah. you're, you're, you're smoothing out all of my jumble mumble. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I personally don't like to hear the sound of my own voice. So for me to sit and listen to myself, I, I would have a very difficult time with it. So I really appreciate that you sit and make me sound good. <laughs> yeah. And we, uh, we, we've made a lot of friends too, uh, in the industry, which I think is, has helped us, um, become better RVers. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I like that you said that we started uh, selfishly because we both had this interest for behind the scenes and we didn't really know if anybody else would, but it yeah. turned out that a lot of people did. So yeah. we, we kind of, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to say that we got lucky, but we kind of got lucky with the idea that other people were interested in finding out about these companies just as much as, as we were. Yeah. And, and Sean, you were genius with the, this topic too, because the amount of guests are endless. I mean, there's yeah, so endless. much, so much involved in the RV industry uh, <laughs> that, it, that it gives us this endless amount of people to try to reach out and get a hold of, which doesn't always work out. I mean, we've had people almost come on and then they kind of disappear. I don't know if they get nervous or, or what, but it is, it's been a lot of fun all throughout. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> and like you said, very educational. Because none of these stories are, they, they might have a little bit of similarities and you can kind of pick out, you know, what makes some of these companies good, but they're all a little different. I mean, they're all obviously different. Yeah, very different. And it's nice that we get big companies like Winnebago uh, to come on and then we get companies that haven't even put out a product yet. Yeah. The, I mean, you get to see the broad range of what it takes to break into the industry and then keep going in the industry so yeah i think we get a real good spectrum of a little bit of everything services the products the yeah the people we're we're going to be interviewing care camps very soon and i think that is such a great service and still ties in with the rv and i'm so thankful that we were able to get them to come on and talk about how they're able to put their program together for kids with cancer to send them to camps and things like that. Uh, again, I, I always give you all the credit for this because this was your brainchild. I guess you could say it's so smart of an idea. It just Yeah, really... but we, I mean, we spent what, probably four months uh, planning it out before we actually released an episode. So yeah. it was a lot of work after the idea that we both kind of you know, we both work together to get it all figured out. So, yeah, yeah. And I would suggest that to anybody listening, if you're, you're if you're thinking about a YouTube channel, a podcast, maybe even Instagram, just anything type of social media stuff is to give yourself time to plan it all out, kind of get a, an idea of what you want it to look like, and then even start doing it without posting. Because we gave ourselves like a, a three episode runway. Yep. 
so that we could always be ahead of the game so that we would be able to always keep our schedule. And, you know, luckily we can say in two and a half years, we have never missed an episode. It's never. every other Thursday and we've never missed. In yeah. fact, we even have a bonus one in there one yeah, time. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was, I, I think, you know, we're patting ourselves on the back here, but I think we did it in a smart way, a logical way. And it, it, it's really worked out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Of all the places you've been, what would you like to see again? Zion National Park. I was there for a week and I don't even think I scratched the surface on the hiking and everything there. And for anybody listening, I recommend like March, April to go. That's the time of year I was there. It wasn't crowded. So it's cold. So, I mean, be prepared to be bundled up for it, but I'll gladly deal with the cold not to have the crowds because I've seen photos and videos of the place being absolutely mobbed. But when I was going out on these hikes, it was just me. We went with John and Nadia. Sabrina wouldn't even go on the hikes. It was too cold, but it was me, John and Nadia on the hikes and we would have the place to ourselves. It, it's been the most scenic. I would say the most scenic trails and hiking that I've been on. And it's just, like I said, we didn't even scratch the surface being there a week. We would do a trail every day. And I think there are like hundreds of trails to do. Wow. So that that's an area I would like to go back. It's a cool spot too, because so we stayed at the uh, the campground that's like right in the center of it all. I believe it's uh, Zion National or Zion Campground. I think it's something Zion's in the name of the campground. It's close to the shuttle that will pick you up to take you to the trails. Though the shuttles weren't running at the time because they don't start until uh, t- it, things pick up. But because the shuttles aren't running, you're allowed to drive your car. Once the shuttles start running, you're not allowed to drive your car anymore. So that's the other advantage I felt anyway, was that we could just hop in our my tow car, drive to the trail, come back and, and drive back. Like you're not waiting for the shuttles that might get busy. But so you're, you're close to the shuttles, but you're also close to the trails to drive to. You're also close to the cafes, the restaurants and the little gift shops that are all in this town right below the mountain itself. And that's all in, that's in walking distance. So you could go to the bars and the cafes and the restaurants and the breakfast place and then walk back to your RV. It, it was just, I, I almost compare Zion National Park to like being staying at Disney World because of the shuttle buses, walking distance to, to get like uh, food and drinks and everything. Like when you're staying at Fort Wilderness, you have a restaurant, you got your bar there, and then you got your shuttle buses that take you to the park. Zion kind of reminded me of Fort Wilderness that way. It's, it's a very unique camping experience, I thought. What about you, Sean? Where's where's a campground? Have you been to Zion? I haven't been to Zion. No, oh, we were go. It was we were gonna go two years ago, but we ended up just getting burned out because we were traveling Happens. every week to a new place, and and we just cut a bunch of stuff off so we could relax a little bit. Julie would love it just for the hiking alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah in fact, uh, this weekend when we were up at in Lynchburg, Virginia, it's close to the Blue Ridge Parkway. And, and uh, she got up early on Saturday and went for a six mile hike to go see some waterfall. Oh, nice. Six miles. Yeah. Me and Toby slept in. Yeah. I'll I'll just watch, (laughs) just bring back photos of the waterfall. (laughs) Six miles. (laughs) But that's how Zion is too. Zion is miles and miles and miles, but I did enjoy it. I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself much of a hiker, but I, I, hiked all day we would we would be gone the entire day on these hiking trips so wow yeah my favorite uh that i would like to go see again is big ben national park Uh, down in south texas yeah that that place it's every environment in one location you can be high up in the mountains in the snow or in 30 or 45 minutes you can be down in the desert or you could be down on the Rio Grande River just everything in between and so and the other thing I liked about it was it's so far away from everything that there's not a lot of people there so you get um it's peaceful I guess there's not crowds everywhere that you go and the people that are there really want to be there because there's I mean you have to want to go there to go there because there's nothing else okay and how long were you there for we were there for two weeks in oh, nice. december and we could have easily stayed there two months to see everything that there is to see in that area because you they have the 
Big Bend National Park. And then they have Big Bend Ranch State Park, which is just as nice as the national park. And then you can also cross over into Mexico and go see some stuff, you know, over there. So just lots and lots to do there. And again, it was so peaceful that I wouldn't mind going back. Yeah, I could live there, actually, I think. Okay, <laughs> it's that nice. Wow. So that's funny that we both picked national parks, though. Yeah, that's interesting because we don't we didn't rehearse this or know what the other person's answers are going to be for really any of these. So that's very cool. And you said you were there December? December, yeah. And the weather was perfect. That's what I was going to ask you. So that's a good time of year for anybody listening. Yeah. Go. Okay. And go like between the holidays. So after Thanksgiving, but before Christmas vacation, because then you don't have the families that are on that, you know, short vacation, either during Thanksgiving week or the Christmas break. That makes sense. And then the place that you stayed, did you have full hookups or was it water electric and a dump station? We stayed at a private campground, which was between the state park and the national park. And so it was a private campground on a golf course. It had everything. Uh, The Wi-Fi was not that good, but I've heard that they've upgraded the Wi-Fi in the campground uh, so that it's a lot faster now. Okay. Yeah. Wi-Fi is kind of hit or miss at every, at every, we, it's very rare rare that we depend on it you know yeah and just like you guys you guys don't really depend on the campground wi-fi that much either anymore you're using the hot spots and stuff like that yeah so is there a place that you were disappointed in or that you would never think of going back to not that i can think of sabrina always says that i have the most positive outlook on life than anybody she knows i always find something great about every place that we visit and it might not be the area but it might just be a person it might be somebody that i chatted with i I don't think i've ever been disappointed anywhere that we've been to because i have always found something that i liked in every every area yeah every every area is different sometimes you can go from like one town to another town just a couple of hours away and the people might speak differently and i find that interesting or the architecture is a little different and i find that interesting so i i can't think of anything that anywhere that we've been got to and we're like oh man i can't wait to leave this like i don't think i've ever felt that way about anywhere we visited how about you no i feel the same way you do but i did have one time like when we were first RVing, we went to a campground in tennessee and it had like no Wi-Fi, no cell signal. We were like completely off the grid and I wasn't prepared for it. I could have easily done it, but I wasn't prepared for it. So it, we didn't leave the area. We left the campground and we went to a KOA that wasn't too far away and enjoyed the area. Yeah, so. I agree with you. That can, you know, if you're not ready for that, that can be bad but at the same time if you're ready for it then that can be great not to have (laughs) cell service and internet sabrina and i right before we started camping we did uh i think it was uh smith mountain lake and we rented a cabin and we didn't realize this at the time but when we got there we had no cell service the cabin didn't have a tv but it turned out to be a nice surprise for us because you know you did stuff that we didn't we played cards We've read, they, they had these journals. We've read these journals of past guests that had oh, stayed in this cool. cabin. So you could hear, like, you could read about what they did on their trip. And we read about the spiders. And then we were looking for spiders. But it was kind of interesting not to have, especially, like, nowadays. I mean, we are so, I mean, I'm just always on my phone. Just always Googling stuff. We don't live in a society where you have to say anymore, oh, I wonder what this is. Or I wonder what, like, you just look at, you know, you just look it up and I, I really take it for granted, I guess. But it was nice for that. You know, it was only a weekend, though. We were there on vacation. You guys work from your RV. So it's a totally different thing. We were there for vacation. So it was a nice surprise, actually, not to have Internet and and cell phone. But when you're working from your RV, not having Internet or cell service is not a nice surprise. <laughs> yeah. We're actually in June, I think we're going to a state park in West Virginia and it has no cell service or anything, but I know that in advance. Yeah. So we'll be better prepared to not need it when we go there and it'll be relaxing. Yeah. Relaxing. So what, what places do you still want to see 
So the only place that I think, you know, we've, I, I, somebody asked us this not too long ago, and I didn't have an answer for them then, but now I do. Because I really feel like Sabrina and I have been very lucky to go to almost everywhere that we've ever wanted to be and see. But there's one place that I haven't seen. I know you have, but I want to be, we want to go to Alaska. We've never been to Alaska. It is on our bucket list. And I want to see these Northern lights. And I want to see, are these Northern lights, do they really look like this? Like they do in movies and TV shows, or is it all a hoax? (laughs) And you've told me they do look like that. (laughs) They do. Yeah. And you can hear them too. So yeah, see that's quiet. I, 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 yeah, it is on our bucket list. I don't know if that will be an RV trip or if it'll be a uh, drive up. See, I've heard different stories about, you know, if you take your RV up there, you're going to get it. The roads aren't great. You're going to get it pelted with rocks and it's on come back all beat up. Your tow cars on be beat up. So I really don't know how we will do that trip. We've we've thought about doing a uh, Alaska cruise. Yeah. So we might we might do that. I know Disney, we're big Disney fans, and Disney does have a cruise ship that does goes up to Alaska. I don't know, though, do you see the Northern Lights when you do that? Is Well, you would know, Sean, is this a, a, something that only occurs certain times of the year? I think it's more common certain times of the year, and I can't remember what those times are, but they are more common certain times of the year, but they can come out any time of the year, really. They can. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And I... I imagine it's you can't see it or hear it during the daylight it's only night nighttime yeah okay even for the sound of it then yeah okay yeah so that's it's on our bucket list it's to be honest i i think you know i think it's the only thing left on our our bucket list for either our being up there or maybe cruising up there except for like maybe japan and like countries uh, other countries and stuff like that what about you i mean you guys have been all over especially with the military too we haven't done New Hampshire, Vermont, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I would like to go explore maybe Idaho and Hmm. Montana a little more. I lived in Montana as a kid, but we didn't really do a lot of sightseeing there. So I'd like to go back to Montana and explore that a little bit. All Basically all the northern states. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Nice. Yeah. We've only driven through Montana. So, you know, people call it like the big sky state. Yeah. And it's true. I don't know what it is. There's like very few trees, but you know, the same can be said about Arizona. There's very few trees in our parts of Arizona, but it doesn't have that illusion of this tall sky like Montana does. When we hit Montana, we're like, wow, that sky is like, but I don't know what causes that. I don't know if it's how far north you are, curvature. I don't know what's going on, but it does look like a large sky. <laughs> yeah. And it's I the- think that has something to do with two it gets so cold there in the winter because there's nothing to stop the wind. Oh, I could see that. So once that wind blows over the, what is it? The Cascade Mountains in uh, in Washington State and yeah. the Rockies, I guess, then there's nothing. Yeah, I could see that. And that, that I guess that is part of the illusion. I mean, not only is there no trees, but there's no mountain. There's no nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is very cool. It's cool looking. Yeah, but we didn't really spend a lot of time. We we did more of a a drive drive through, but it was very beautiful to drive through. You were asking like about our favorite places that we've been to. We we even have favorite places to drive through. Like I love driving through New Mexico and I love driving through Arizona. I love driving through Iowa. I, I think all these areas, I, I really enjoyed our drive through Montana. Some of these areas I've just enjoyed the scenery going by sometimes. It's, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah. Get the drive on. is part of the fun, right? I mean, it's for me, the, it's the journey. Yeah. I enjoy the drive sometimes more than the destination at times. Yeah. I, I just enjoy driving to begin with. But in the RV, for some reason, when we're RVing, it does step up the fun factor, even though people are acting like knuckleheads all around us. And, you know, they'll get on my nerves a little bit. But that's only in the city parts. You know, once you're out in these other states where the road is like wide enough for everybody and there's nobody else on, there's no reason for anybody to cut you off. It is a very relaxing, enjoyable scenery, just kind of kick back, relax. And uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's like watching a movie or something. I don't know what it's like. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's a lot of fun to be driving. I, I, Sabrina always says I have a stupid smirk on my face when when we're driving. (laughs) Do you have a, a funny, I know you do. 
do you want to share a, a funny story, one or two funny stories about RVing? Yeah, well, one that's kind of embarrassing, I guess, is uh, like I said, we were part of that RV Nomads documentary, and they had this big thing called Nomad Fest when they released the documentary. Mm -hmm. And so it was in this little town in Texas. The fest was like three days or four days. And then everybody sort of headed out from there. But the only way to go was basically north or south. There's no roads. You know, it wasn't a metropolitan area. We were out in a country. So the state highway, you either had to go north or south to get to another major road to get where you wanted to go. Well, we were heading down to San Antonio. And so we pull out and we were following another RVers, Dan and Lisa Brown from Always on Always Liberty. On Liberty. Yep. And we were, so we were kind of following them down to San Antonio and they pulled off um, into a parking lot to do something. I don't even remember what they were going to do. And so I was like, oh, should I turn in and, and check on them or should I keep going and just slow down? By the time I made the decision to turn in, it was almost too late. Well, it was because we got, <laughs> it was pouring down rain and we got stuck in a ditch going into this parking lot. And so all these other people from the <laughs> festival yeah. were driving by. And here that is, these people that were selected to be part of this documentary about our being were stuck in a ditch. <laughs> uh, but it took uh, probably four or five hours, me, Dan and Lisa, the uh, county sheriff and the county maintenance guy took us to probably three or four hours to get out of that ditch. Did they bring a tow truck with them? How did they get you out? There was no tow trucks for miles and miles and miles. So what we ended up doing was I was on the uh, leveling jacks. Okay. And uh, we would jack it up a little bit. Then Dan would put wood blocks under the get them under that until we got it up high enough to where I could pull out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And this was your, this wasn't the Arctic Fox. This was your no, cyclone, was the, the cyclone, 40, yeah. 42, 44, 44 foot. Yeah. Wow. That's a smart idea though, to use your jacks. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would have thought about that. That's wasn't my good. idea. Wasn't your idea. <laughs> Cause you had six jacks on that. Yeah. Were you working just certain ones to scoot yourself yes. kind of over? Oh, that's yep. a good idea. Yeah. The sheriff was, I think, great, grateful to have some action in his county that he didn't uh, even like give me a ticket or fine me for the damage I did to the the ditch, you know? Okay. Uh, oh, I wouldn't even thought about that. Yeah. So uh, we got out and all was good, but it was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> was it? It was during the day, though, at least, right? You weren't. Yeah, out it was there during the day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But even still, that's not great <laughs> especially in the rain and like you said but i can look back on it now and laugh yeah but probably <laughs> then it wasn't the laughing matter well especially like you said too i mean you're you're part of this documentary about <laughs> rvers and full-time <laughs> rvers you, you yeah. should know what you're doing right yeah <laughs> but that's just happens i mean that you know that's just kind of i mean something's always happening when you're rving there's no never like a, a dull moment i don't think anyway and it's it's a shame that, you know, like when things are happening, it does get you frustrated. But like you said, now, now you can look back on it and kind of chuckle about it. But in, in the moment, in the time, yeah, it's not all that funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Oh, yeah, I've got tons of them. But <laughs> I, I know th I would say one of the worst ones is when we had that rental. Obviously, we were new to RVing because it was our first time RVing was with the rental. I'm not even sure if I've ever told you this story, Sean. We were setting up. I had watched a ton of YouTube videos of how to set up an RV. And one of the things that RV geeks always say is, to, you know, make sure when you're setting up your RV and you set up your, your sewer hose that it is secure on the, uh, the inlet for the sewer. Make sure you know, use the clear elbow and make, and just make sure that is secure because when you open up these valves, it's a lot of pressure that comes through here. A surprisingly amount of pressure, way more than you would ever guess. I was not secured <laughs> as well as it should be. 
and I I pull the black tank valve first. It comes rumbling down the sewer, and it hits that elbow that elbow joint there, and it shot up, flipped around, and shot straight up into the air. Luckily, it did not spray on me. It did not spray on the RV. The wind was going away from us, but we're at a campground. It's a full campground. We got there around four o'clock. So everybody else has already settled in. Sean, it is the worst smell I have ever smelled in my life. It was a rental. It was supposed to be empty for us and cleaned out. I just opened it just to make sure. So it wasn't even our waste. It was whoever rented it before us. But for some reason, that made it worse, that it wasn't even our waste. It was somebody else's waste, made it so much worse. And Sabrina was on the other side of the RV. We, We had actually rented this RV and we went with a friend of ours, Mark, him and Sabrina were on the other side, getting like a campfire, getting ready to go. They came a running around the RV. They're like, what's that smell? And they saw pretty much crap flying in the air. It was horrific. I, I can happily say though, that's the only time that has ever happened to us. I have always since that day made sure that that hose <laughs> is secure into the sewer. It, I guess it didn't have, you know, most of them have like a screw top and you screw, screw top, it in, yeah. but this one didn't, this one just sat in there and I put like, I, I honestly didn't realize the force that was on come out of there. So it had like this little cap and I just closed the, you know, like this little light plastic cap come down on top of it. I was like, oh yeah, that's secure. Man, what a lesson learned. On that one, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it doesn't screw down, I'll either have Sabrina, Sabrina like put her foot on it or i find a couple of rocks and i'll put heavy rocks on top of it because that is like i don't know what the psi is when you open those valves when those tanks are full but it's high yeah it comes out (laughs) quick it's like a fire hydrant (laughs) it really is it was the grossest i mean really just horrible so what did you do nothing there was nothing to do i mean it was in the air and just being carried away from us luckily we were in an end site where there was no RV next to us. Otherwise, it would have sprayed all over the side of the road. I don't know what we would have done then. But luckily, it was just field and grass. Not really field, just grass. I mean, the odor was horrible. Everybody in that campground must have smelled it. But at least it didn't hit anybody or hit anybody's vehicles or anything like that that I'm aware of anyway. When that happened, I we finished up and we went inside. We never we didn't come back out till the next morning. Okay. <laughs> we were kind of hiding that night. At least the smell didn't permeate the RV. No, 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 I think we were good that way. And I don't even think the smell lasted that long outside. Like once I knew what was happening, I closed the valve. But by that time, it's already a little late. Yeah. Like a good amount. It already. There's a long tube. There's a long tube. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It was already spraying for a little while. It, it was what I call a pucano. So <laughs> a pucano. it was, <laughs> it was bad, Sean. <laughs> Probably it was the most, I, th- I would say it's got to be the most embar- embarrassing thing that has ever happened to us. So I think this is an open-ended question. I'm not sure there's a one answer to it, but your favorite aspect of RVing? Favorite aspect of RVing. There's tons of stuff that I love about RVing. I'm I'm going to say that it's the people that we meet. I think that's usually my go-to answer because I've been so surprised. Both of us have been so surprised with just how nice everybody is that we meet on the road. And it's not just the campgrounds. It's at uh, the national parks. Just today, on our way to this campground today, we stopped for fuel, and somebody was asking me about our RV at the gas station. They wanted to know, you know, the size of it, how long have we been RVing. They asked if we lived in it. He said that he used to RV. He had kids. He kind of got out of it, but they want to get back into RVing. But they also have motorcycles, and they want to tour the country on motorcycles. So I told him, oh, well, it sounds like a toy hauler you know, would be the way to go for you. And he's like, I think that's what we're leaning towards. But I mean, just people in general have been so nice to us uh, everywhere we go. We've had people come up to us and ask if we need a hand setting up or invited us to uh, campfires or barbecue. I mean, people have offered us food and, you know, asked us if we wanted to join them for dinner, people that we've never met before. So for me, I think the best part of the, uh, RVing experience has been the people that we met. And because of social media, a lot of times we can keep in touch 
with the people that we've met. So people that we've met at campgrounds a year or two years ago, we're still talking to and we follow them on Instagram and we say, hey, you know, we're, we're nearby. We can meet up if you guys have time. And yeah, I, I'd say it's got to be the people for me. Yeah, I, it's funny you say the people because we were at a campground this weekend and across from us in a site was a uh, leisure travel van, a Unity. They're nice. And uh, the people came out, um, they were going for a walk and they walked by our spot and I said, hey, is that the the model with the Murphy bed in it? Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, we got the one. It's got the Murphy bed. It's like two years old, I think he said. And he was like, come over and take a look inside if you want, you know, like <laughs> yeah. w- where else would you have somebody say, yeah, come, come over to my house, take a look. Yeah. <laughs> if you were just like, happen right. to be walking by them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing the, the the level of friendliness. Also, I guess it kind of goes along with it, but the whole community, it's not just the other RVers, but the campground owners, the business owners, you know, most of the people associated with the RV community are like that. Yeah. There's yeah. Very I, few assholes, I guess. Yeah, very few. And they're they're all so helpful. We've had people. So another embarrassing, you know, this goes back to the people and an embarrassing story. Uh, I was pulling out of a campsite one time and I get out and I look all above, usually for trees and like low hanging uh, branches and I didn't look down <laughs> to see what was towards the bottom because I never had a problem and I never hit anything on the ground I'm always you know if something's on hit it's like an air conditioner unit or something like that but I pull out of this campsite and I even said to Sabrina I said oh this looks easy we're gonna get out of here with I said you don't even have to watch me pull out of here and I pull out of the spot and our exhaust got caught on a tree stump that was cut down you know it only stuck out a few inches off the ground but it was enough for our exhaust to get stuck on it. And we pulled forward, couldn't pull forward, put it in reverse, couldn't back up. We were actually, the exhaust had like melted and wedged itself into this tree, this little tiny tree stump. And I get out and I'm looking at this. I tried to push it. I got a crowbar. I tried to pry it off. Somebody came by. He's like, you know, I got a Sawzall if you want. I can just cut off your exhaust and you'd be on your way. It's like, you got a Sawzall with you? <laughs> He's like, I got everything with me. But I mean, he was a super nice. He just hauled that we were having a problem, came over. He cut off the small bit that was stuck on the tree. We were able to wiggle it off and off we went. I actually, I still have. I had to buy an extension for the exhaust <laughs> oh, okay. to make up for the, the difference that we cut. Because what happened is by cutting it short, the fumes would get tucked up underneath the RV and you could smell it if we uh, would, if, whenever we were warming up the RV to leave. So I had to put a little extension to get the fumes away from the RV a bit. <laughs> but that just goes to show just how friendly these people are. But that was another embarrassing moment, getting the exhaust stuck on a tree stump. <laughs> Terry's got an interesting question. How, with us being full timers, how do you spend time with family? How do you how do you get to see them? Well, for the first few years that we were RVing, we had kind of a circuit that we did that was just because we were visiting family. Like we would go over to Texas and San Antonio where our sons were, two of our sons, and we would go from there. We'd go to Tennessee um, where Julie's parents live. And then we would go up to Virginia where our son, our other son and his wife lived. And then we would cruise down 95, go to Florida where my parents were. And we kind of stayed in that general area for a few years. I mean, we would go off of course and see other things, but kind of that general area is where we stayed. And now with FaceTime and Zoom and all that. I mean, I see the kids every day pretty much and parents too. We can talk to our parents, you know, through through FaceTime and I think technology has made it very easy. Yeah, it definitely helps. I mean, it really helps. <laughs> well, even you and I, we we FaceTime all the time. Yeah. Or or Zoom. I don't yeah. know. I guess it's not really FaceTime. But yeah, I I would say that we kind of did the same thing. Like we have family it sounds like you have family all over too, but we have family like all over Pennsylvania, Seattle, Florida, Canada. And we just, I mean, that is the nice thing about the RV and being on wheels and kind of on the move 
is once we're in an area near a family member, it, it's always been easy enough for us to stop by. But we've also, like for nieces and nephews, if we're somewhere cool, uh, we'll fly a niece or nephew to us and they can stay in the RV, usually just one niece or one nephew at a time. They can stay in the RV with us. Like we've taken our niece to Disney World or our nephew to Disney World and Disneyland and stuff like that. So if we're somewhere cool, it works out. We've we've done like Michigan trips and geez, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Pen- we were in Pennsylvania not too long ago. My nephew came out and stayed. He thought this thing was like a transformer. He thought it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you always have that option too, to have somebody, a uh, family member fly out to where you're staying, or this is something we've never done, but I always thought was a cool option. Like the KOAs always have cabins. And I've always said to my parents, my parents are not camping, but I always say to my parents and family members, why don't you come out to this campground that we're staying at? You know, no matter where we are, if it's somewhere near, I said, you know, the campground's got cabins and they're like, "Eh, I don't want to stay in a cabin, but it's a great option. Before we started the podcast today, we were talking about how nice these cabins are getting in these koas i mean they're like beautiful cabins now yeah we they're nice enough that it it made us look them up forest river is making the cabins for koa and you can't we wanted to buy one (laughs) but they're not for sale for the general public they're only uh producing them for koas we should probably forest uh, forest river probably be a good company to have one maybe we could talk about these cabins that they're making because i always think of forest river as the RV company, but right. yeah, maybe we could ha- have them on and talk about the RV and of course, but also maybe some of these cabins and how they got into making the cabins for KOA. Yeah. The cabins yeah. are beautiful. Yeah. They're not what, see, but I, I think that's the thing. My parents are thinking cabin, no bathroom, no comfort, but these are like kitchen, bathroom, stairs, like nice windows, the side patio, everything. I mean, they're nice. They're really nice. <laughs> they're not what you think of when you think of a cabin. It's not like the three little bears. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what about when you guys, uh, I doubt you and Sabrina ever have disagreements, but if you did, what, what, how would you do it? How would you handle it in a confined space? We definitely disagree on things. I wouldn't say that we ever fight. We've never gotten into an argument or anything like that. But I would say Sabrina actually came up with this because somebody else had asked us this. She said that, you know, if need be, you could always go outside <laughs> because, I mean, the RV is a small you know, if you don't argue, this is a bad spot to be arguing because everybody can hear you. There's no privacy with an RV. You raise your voice a little bit. I'm sure people outside right now can hear me talking to the to, to you guys and the mic and everything right now, even at this level. <laughs> so if you're arguing, then everybody's kind of like in your business. But yeah, she's got a good idea, you know, just uh, go out, you know, if you're really that upset, go outside, relax for a little bit. We have a tow car. Maybe you shouldn't be driving if you're really, really upset. But if you're just like kind of annoyed, I will say that Sabrina gets annoyed with me and I get annoyed with her. We could always get in the car and maybe uh, go on a scenic drive or just or just walk around the campground and just yeah. cool off that way and just you know take in some of the scenery, take Bell for, I got to spell it, W-A-L-K so she doesn't hear me and get excited. Other than that, I, I, I think she, I think that's good advice is maybe just go outside and cool off for a little bit. You're usually in a nice area to check out. What about you guys? You, you guys don't really argue either. I would say the same thing, though, like go outside and go for a walk or go sit under the awning. You yeah. know, there's ways to get away and then and then well, not get away, but be separate more so than in the tiny confines of the RV. I would say that if anything, full timing really brought us together closer. So we didn't disagree that much. Yeah. I agree you know, with that you, too. You have basically each other to make it through the full time travel. You have to work together. Yeah, and I think it's I think it's very good exercises, or I, maybe exercises isn't the right word for it. But yeah, you're you're presented with challenges that you you never had before. You know, right. just different, unique challenges about maneuvering, traveling, getting places to stay. So you do have to work together, and you got to kind of trust one another and, and getting some things through sometimes <laughs> it's just the way you know it's just the way it works we did have that happen one time where we were at uh, lazy days in tampa florida and you know they have a campground there i was trying to get our cyclone into a spot 
and this was before we really understood each other when we were backing in. Hmm. And so that, you know, we're talking 70 feet of truck and trailer that we had to back in. She just left me. She got so annoyed. She just <laughs> left. And then the neighbor came outside and said, I know how those women can be. And he <laughs> backed me. He helped me back into the site. So, so yeah, she just w- walked out and went to like the clubhouse or something at the, at lazy days and just left. I, I think I've heard before that more arguments camping and RVing are done while backing an RV or, or fifth wheel or travel trailer. And I could see that because Sabrina and I have argued, you know, we, we just have a motor home. It, it's gotten to the point now I just back. I've, I'm, I've gotten used to it enough that I can just back the RV in just like a car. It's, so she doesn't even bother. She doesn't even look anymore. I, she's in the other room. She's don't hear me say this, but I mean, I used to call her pockets because she would stand behind the RV and just shake her head. Yes. Or no, as I was backing up, I'm like, hey, you got to give me a little bit more than that. Give me a hand signal. Tell me like this way or that way. But <laughs> yeah, it did. It did take us a while to figure out that communication. But uh, but like you said, it's you got to work together to make it right. Yeah. So just all growing, I guess. It is. Yeah, it is. But I, I agree with you. I think we've grown uh, together and, and stronger because of our being yeah, uh, because of it, because you do have to work on your communication skills, and yeah, you just gotta you just gotta work together, uh, or otherwise it's just not gonna work. We used to do ballroom dancing for oh. a few years before we were RVing. I equate RVing to ballroom dancing because, again, you have to communicate in weird ways to get the job done. And it's the same way in ballroom dancing, it's more like touching and feeling doing doing that but it, it's equivalent that you have to work together to get the final product i did not know that you were a dancer sean i wouldn't say i'm a dancer so <laughs> <laughs> well you took classes yeah we took classes and did some shows but yeah huh. far from a dancer i think that should be your next video so we have a video on ballroom dancing videos on uh, ballroom dancing ballroom dancing yeah. oh i'm not to look them up no, no, not on our YouTube. Uh, We've never published them. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to see this on. That's your next video for YouTube, not <laughs> not private. <laughs> <Turn it red. laughs> yeah, I was thinking more Chicory's Travels Ballroom Dancing One on One One Hundred One or something like that. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's ready for publication. Okay. <laughs> So this is a big question that we always get is uh, what accessories have you purchased that you no longer use? I wouldn't say that we no longer use, but we rarely use it. And if we were to buy it over again, we just wouldn't enough. And it's a shame because it's a very nice product. It's, It's called a clam and it's like an outdoor room, I guess, but it's like a screen room and it sets up really nice, very easy. I mean, it's made very well. It's got durable materials. I can set it up by myself in under 60 seconds, but we made a couple of mistakes with it. We didn't anticipate on the size of it. So we bought a. they come in different sizes. We bought a medium size because we were like, oh, we want the medium size because it could fit over a standard size picnic table with room to spare around okay. it. And we're like, oh, that's when we would want it to keep the bugs out is so that we could set up over the picnic table. But we didn't realize that a lot of campgrounds, the private campgrounds aren't that big. If you were to set this up, a lot of times it falls into your neighbor's area. Mm. It's like pushed up against our RV. We got to the point that it's like, we only use it when we're boondocking or dry camping. And those times aren't that, you know, those times are far in between for us. And it just worked out that, or it's it just turned out anyway, that we rarely use this item. And it was kind of a, for us, it turned out to be a waste of money, unfortunately. We just, again, you know, it's a good product. It just, it just didn't work out that great for us. I think we've had a couple of things. Uh, one is, and I think the same thing happened to you, but those little propane grills that you can buy at like Camping World and yeah. they're ceramic, I think, kind of a, expensive yeah um and we never used that thing we never really grill outside very much i think the only times i've done grilling outside is when we've been camping with you oh really (laughs) but 
Yeah, we we never used it. So we gave that away to somebody at a campground. And then uh, the other thing that I bought that I never use anymore is a Wii Boost, just because it wasn't, it didn't have the power I needed for internet. So we ended up getting a pep wave, which is considerably more expensive, but it does a much better job. And how we use it, I'm sure the WeBoost is fine for people that are not working. Right. But as a both of us working, it it we needed more out of it. So okay. Yeah, I forgot about the grill. Yeah, that that was another one. I used to have a, a little tabletop grill. And like you said, I, we barely used it. I wound up giving it away to a homeless person houseless person i don't know he was living in a car i don't know if you're okay. homeless uh i would consider him homeless, homeless if you're living in a yeah. car yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't want somebody to call me homeless i don't have a home but <laughs> i consider the rv to be our home <laughs> yeah but I, I wound up giving it to him because we and it wasn't so much you know it was easy to set up and stuff like that it was the cleanup for me i was like it's just as easy you know we have a small rv it's just as easy for me to cook inside and bring it out like it, it never, so we just, you know, like you guys, we, we just barely used it. And now it's a treat if we're staying at a KOA that has a grill or a campground that has a grill to use the grill. So now it became something like, oh, it's something special. Oh, we'll cook out. We'll do barbecues on the grill. And that's how you and I did it anyway at, at the KOAs. So yep. it becomes something to look forward to or something like fun. Like, now, one thing I just bought that we never had before, and I just got it the first time we used it was this weekend camping, was a mat for oh. under the awning. And I got a, uh, I think it's a nine by nine mat. Okay. I really like that thing. What's it made out of? I, I have no idea. Is it the like um, vinyl or plastic or is it like yeah. a carpet? Okay. So no, the vinyl no, plastic. Like, yeah. Okay, nice. And the only reason why I got it is because we adopted a dog. And so I I knew like <laughs> my son's dog, the times he's been camping with us, he doesn't like laying on the, like next to the RV because of the stones. Yeah. So we got this mat and the dog really liked it too. So <laughs> I just think it's funny how much we spoil these, t- <laughs> these pets that the ground isn't good enough anymore yeah. for them. <laughs> I, we always make fun of Belle because if we put like, you know, the dinette's already pretty squishy, but if we put a pillow down on the dinette, she won't sit on the dinette. She'll sit on the pillow that's on top of the dinette. Like it's got to be even squishier than squishy. <laughs> 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 These pets are funny. Otherwise I would have never bought a mat, but. That's a good idea. I would imagine that's going to keep, I, we don't have a mat, but I would imagine that will keep dust and stuff too. Like when Toby's coming in or even us. You know, even yeah. when you're going in and out, but yeah. keep dust and dirt like off the steps and in into the the foyer. Yeah. <laughs> the foyer of the RV. We got one that matched the paint scheme on our oh, RV. Cool. So it looks like it actually came with the RV. Was that from Camping World or did you order it at Amazon? Amazon. Amazon. Nice. You get everything on Amazon. Now we've answered this question before, I think, to ourselves about who would your, our dream guests be? Mm-hmm. Or did you, do you still have the same I still have the answer? Same, yeah. Mine's the same answer too. And we almost had mine on, which is, we did. yeah, John and Peter, the RV geeks. And it's because I, I would love to have them on the show because I think they have provided a tremendous amount of helpful videos to the RV community on YouTube. I mentioned earlier that we, we were watching their videos before we got into RVing. And I swear because of them, we had an easier time transitioning into the RV life because their RV videos are so well done on such a professional level for the, the how to and for maintenance. And I would write them questions constantly and they would always answer me on comments, even though they're a big channel and they get tons of questions, you know, every week, I'm sure they're getting tons of questions a week. They would always take the time to write back to Sabrina I and say, hey, Kenny and Sabrina, we feel this, or it's been our experience that this has worked or, you know, just whatever it is. And then I also wanted to talk to them because they're on the TV show, The RVers. And I wanted to find out maybe a little bit about the process of how that all came together. And we almost had them on the show. We sent them questions and stuff like that, but um, they're pretty busy. And 
it just never worked out. It's uh, there, there are people though that I will run back around as I'm going through our list of, of potential guests and I'll, I'll send them another email, but we almost had them on one time. <laughs> it just, it just didn't work out. And then I the think pandemic they went out hit. of the country. I think they went out they of were, the country. Yeah, they were yeah. going out of the country, like right before they were coming on. And then uh, we missed, we missed that window. And then they were out of the country for a little bit. And then when they got back, the pandemic hit and it was just a mess. So I'll, I'll wrap back around and I'm hoping that they're, you know, they are a dream guest for me. And I'm, I'm still hopeful that we will get them on the show someday. And then for you, you have a, a good guest. Yeah, I would like to get the, the CEO of Camping World on, Marcus Lamonis, just because I think he's created the Walmart of RVing with, with Camping World. And besides the Camping World stores, he uh, they have all the good Sam stuff. They have insurance. They have... I mean, it's like a one-stop shop company for RVing. And I just wanted, I would love to know if he got into Camping World with that vision in mind or if it was something that grew over time. And I know that he has a lot of people that, you know, there's a lot of people that are either lovers or haters <laughs> of Camping World. Yeah. And I would just like to to talk to him to see if, which way is right, you know, which, which opinion is, is right. And I think it's the, he's just created a business and it it's expanded over time with opportunities. I think he's been a good, to me, he's like a typical entrepreneur that, you know, is, is constantly growing his business. And I don't think it's anything negative. He's not like trying to screw the RV community. I think, think his intentions are actually very good and it's just happened that he's been able to grow this massive business yeah yeah i'd be interested in having him on too and i agree with you i think there's a lot of opinions out there about camping world good good or bad and i think it just depends you know camping world's a huge huge company so you might go to one camping world and have a bad experience but you might be at another one and have a a wonderful experience and and i don't you know it's hard to you know, for anybody that's had a bad experience at Camping World, I think maybe give them another shot in a different location. You know, people are different everywhere. So you, you just, when you become that big of a company too, I think it's hard to please everybody. <laughs> You're on. And unfortunately, negative news travels faster, quicker, and is louder than positive news. So yeah, I, I agree with you, Sean. I don't think, yeah, I don't think he's like the villain of RVing or anything like that, but you do hear people kind of, try to paint them that way yeah. yeah and we we've worked with good sam you know at their shows doing speaking events and stuff and everybody there is just like everybody else in the rv community they're all so nice and they want everybody to at the shows to be able to see what they want to see and be able to get in and talk to the different uh exhibitors they have there and everything um, so yeah, I just, I, I'm a little bit biased, I guess, because I've been exposed to the company more than the average RVer, I guess. And I'm very impressed with what, what that company does for the RV community. And I think you, either you or Julie have met him before and he was nice. Maybe it was Julie that met Julie him. Julie met him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, how do we get a hold of him? <laughs> I yeah, guess is the question, <laughs> which is really the question for all of our guests is like, how do we get a hold? How do we get a hold of the top person of that company? And that's the challenge of the show, I would say, is, you know, how do, how do we get to that particular person? How do you get as high in the company as possible? <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's easy, but other times it's like not so clear cut. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fun though. <laughs> so do you have a goal for the podcast do you have like an ultimate goal i don't think i do but that's not uncommon for me i don't set like these goals and say hey i gotta be here by this certain time i think for me it's just a growth thing i think the show continues to grow very well and i think our audience grows i th i think uh i think you and i have grown even by doing the show and i think all of our episodes get better as we go along too. So as long as I'm seeing like positive um, 
steps and, and, and growth, I think I'm happy with that. And I don't really say, oh, well, we need to be, you know, uh, 10 million listeners and, yeah. and, and this. So I, I don't think I have too much of a, a goal for the show. I mean, I would be, I would love to be like the number one, you know, it'd be awesome if we were the number one podcast in the world or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I don't really set out that way or look at it that way. What about you? I think my goal, and it's simple, I have a kind of a simple goal for the podcast. And that is for people, I would like for people to get as much out of the episodes as we get out of them. So if we can convey that, that piece of it, and grow with listeners that get what we're trying to do, mm-hmm. um, I th- that would that makes me happy. I, I think that more than a certain amount of downloads or subscribers or money, um, actually having people get something out of it is really, I think that's like the reason why I do it. And that's the goal is to share our enthusiasm and, and, uh, and hopefully people get out of the interviews what we get out of them. That's a better answer than I had, Sean. You should have just answered that. You can cut my answer out. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Which is the whole reason why we started is to share all these cool interviews with with you know RV industry people with other people. So mm-hmm. I guess the kind of the goal is met every time we get a comment that said, "Oh, thanks for for sharing that," and I'm gonna look more into this product now because you know, it was a good interview and like just the, the recent episode with, we did with pet hub, hmm. you know, I learned so much from that episode. Tons. I went and got a pet hub tag for, <laughs> for my new dog, because I realized how important just that tag is in, especially for travelers in getting your dog back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those, uh, yeah, they can disappear in no time. I'm yeah. sure Toby is faster than you are. I'm sure he is. Yeah. <laughs> Especially after I've had a few beers on a Saturday night. <laughs> Might not be faster than Julie, though. <laughs> Julie's a machine. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was fun, Kenny. I th- yeah, this was a good idea. I like this. I like doing this a lot. This was a lot of fun. I, I yeah. actually learned things about you that I didn't know about. So it was cool. Yeah. And, this yeah, was- and the poop cano. Poop cano. Poop cano. Yeah. Poop cano. <laughs> So we appreciate everybody listening and uh, we hope you tune in. We got some good episodes coming up. I know one coming up is Campground Views. Um, I'm sure people have heard the buzz about that in the RV community. And and we got to talk to, I guess he's one of the four founding people and is kind of the CEO of that group and uh, very good discussion with him about what they're trying to do and and we got care camps coming up, which is going to be awesome. They're doing a great service. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one too. So a lot of great things coming up. Um, we hope everybody tunes in every other Thursday. And then, of course, every fourth episode, I guess it is. It is every fourth we, episode. <laughs> we do uh, We do this driver's edition. And um, if you have any guests that you would like us to try and get, let us know. We work hard. Well, I should say Kenny works hard on uh, on bringing bringing these guests in, and uh, sometimes it just takes us a little time to to get them. But we are willing to try anybody that you're interested in talking to. Yeah, definitely. So we'll let everybody go, and uh, we want to thank Battleborn Batteries, our sponsor. Another awesome group of people do a lot of charity stuff and help a lot of people out in the RV community. Even if you just want to call and talk to them about what you're trying to do with your solar setup and you're not intending on buying anything from them, run what you want to do by them and they'll, they'll let you know if it's a good idea or not. And I know when, when I got my stuff from them, they didn't try to sell me anything that I did not need unless I insisted on that I needed it but they tried to talk me out of it. So they're not, they're not there just to sell you a bunch of crap. They're there to give you what you need and only what you need to, to make your, your solar and battery 
your whole electric experience uh, much better in the RV. So definitely go check them out, link to them on our website. Let them know that we sent you. If you, if you do happen to call, <laughs> tell them beyond the wheel sent you. So uh, until next time, we want to wish everyone safe travels. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Battleborn Batteries, the best name in the RV and marine industry. Yeah. These lithium batteries are designed and assembled in the USA yeah, backed by a 10-year warranty. The best solution for your battery anxiety. So go check them out at battlebornbatteries.com.